Hey, sweet friends, this is Gina. Welcome to the Rebookery channel. I am so sorry it has been forever since I have done a video. I have just been swamped with stuff at work and um, taking care of my babies at school. So I finally have some time to um, share with you some new things that I have in the shop and to show you um, my journal that we made during Finding Your Style 2. And so this was actually um, my inspiration for these new journals that I'm going to put in the shop on Friday. So let's see, today is the 8th, 9th, so tomorrow will be the 10th, and then Friday will be the 11th. So Friday, October 11th, I will be putting um, four, no, three, three new journals in my Etsy shop, and I will do it at 6 p.m. Central Time, and I will show you those journals here in just a second. But what I wanted to do was show you guys how my journal that I made during Finding Your Style 2, how it's coming along. So I love this, and I wanna tell you why I love this. Um, one, it's a single signature journal. So it's really um, simple, and it's got plenty of room for me to do all of my journaling, um, to add lots of bulky items, and pictures and interactive elements and things like that. So I think this is an envelope that opens, but I can't open it right now. Um, so I, I'm really enjoying this journal and I love filling it up. I love working in it. I've even decided that it would be um, my calendar, if I can find it, there we go. It would be my calendar or my junk planner for October. So this is almost Full, and here's some stuff that I just haven't put in but this is almost full and so I'm gonna make another one for me because I want this exact same kind of journal and so as I worked in this journal I decided that I wanted to share with you guys and so the last journal release I did I did some of those arty junk journals and then I made a few more and so these will be the ones that I put in the shop on Friday but here is where this journal has become just the most awesome. Picking it up and holding it and having it bulk out because it's just a single signature. Um, it doesn't get that splayed out, you know, at the ends. It just stays in this nice um, shape. And I know this is hard to describe, but those of you that are journal freaks uh, like me, you, you understand what I'm talking about. There's just something about holding a journal and you know that the journal, it just, it lays flat. Um, it You can work on it. You can actually work on all the different pages even as you get towards the end. There is just something to be said for that. And so I'm loving, loving, loving this style and I am loving the single signature. And so with that, I made three more and I made some adjustments to them because there's a couple of things that I found out um, I needed to allow for. So let me show you the three that I have. Okay, so here are the three arty junk journals that I have that will be in my shop. And I think, let me zoom out just a little bit here. There we go. So I think I will show you them compared to the one I'm working in. So the one that I'm working in, um, you can see it's a little bit smaller. And what I found was as I started to bulk this up, what happens is the spine becomes um, more rounded. And I also found that my papers, when the spine becomes more rounded, it's gonna pull on this cover a little bit. And so my papers really came to the end. And now it does not bother me and I am okay with having my pages hanging out. But what I did when I made these three was I allowed for that and I made some extra room here so that when this does start to really bulk up, um, this will compensate and you'll have a little bit of extra space. Now you can see this is super flat. And when you get this, if you were one to purchase this, you may think, oh man, I got gypped because this is a super flat journal. If you remember in Finding Your Style 2, when I made mine, it was super flat. And that's what you want. You don't want to bulk it up when you're making it because then when you go to work in it, it's already done and there's not a lot of room for you to play in. 
And so if you remember, this was very skinny when I first started and now it is the perfect size and it's just the perfect um, amount of weight and uh, I just can't even explain to you how much I love this journal. So this is gonna be very flat, but it has so much room to grow. And in these journals, I kept it the same amount of pages. In fact, I believe on this this particular journal, and I'd have to go back and look in Finding Your Style too, but I think what I did was um, 18 pages, I think is what I did. And then I ended up and I actually taped a few papers in. So it actually has a few more pages than when I started because I taped a few of them in just with some washi tape. For these guys, I went ahead and did 20 pages, but then as I was binding it, I was like, okay, I just wanna add one more piece of paper. And so I did, I added one more of my favorite letterhead because I just love how it works with paint and watercolor and marker. So it's actually got um, 21 pages, which would be times two. So um, it's gonna be about 42 pages. And then by the time you do that fronts and backs, it's gonna be 42 times two, which would be 84 surfaces for you to work on. And again, lots of room for this to get good and chunky. So the front is made out of some of my original artwork. The back is some textured um, scrapbook paper. And then the inside back is some of my original artwork. And the inside front is some textured scrapbook paper. And then you'll have a nice big lace pocket. And then something I added new to these journals that I have not used yet, but I've been wanting to, is I made pockets out of these pieces of paper that came out of a wallpaper book. So these would be the fabric, compa the companion fabrics that would go with uh, wallpaper. And I've had a few of these and I just quite didn't know what I wanted to do with them. And it just so happened that I had some that just worked perfectly in these journals. And so what I did was this is the fabric. So this would be the companion fabric that would go with the wallpaper. And then I just folded it over and I created a pocket. So this could be just like it is. You could sew things on here. You could pin things on here. You could stitch on here. You could even do some painting on here. And then this is a blank side that you can use as a pocket, but you could also do your artwork on. And I love this because I think it just adds a little, um, some really cool texture and something that is very odd and you probably wouldn't see um, in a journal. So scrapbook paper sewn to other scrapbook paper, book pages, security envelopes, some of my favorite letterhead, some ledger paper, storybook paper. This is like some parchment paper. Um, I found a cool a, a blueberry cookbook. So this is all about blueberries and the paper was really yummy. So um, the recipes were yummy, but the paper was really yummy too. So I threw some of that in. This is a page of mixed media paper that came um, from an old journal. And I don't want to say old, like as in years old, it was just like um, a journal that I had that I never worked in. And so I took the pages out of it. This is some paper that came out of an old cookbook, some transfer paper patterns, some graph paper, uh, paper from a map, tablet paper, a 1973 calendar page. Here's the letterhead paper again. This is a page from an atlas. It's a page from a ledger, um, a heavy duty scrapbook paper, 1981 calendar. And then this is a piece of wallpaper that has been folded and turned into pockets. And so then as you go through, it's just the other sides of these papers. So the journals are set up all the same. You may just have a different um, design or a different page, but they all came from the same sources. And these are all basically the same types of papers that I used when I made my um, arty, my junky art journal. And when I go to make my next one, I will use these same pages. So here's another one. 
And this one has flocked. It's almost like wallpaper, but it's scrapbook paper, but it's flocked. And then this is some original artwork. Here is some textured scrapbook paper with some lace pocket. And then here is another piece of just some collage artwork up oh, with a random string on here. Here is the fabric companion that went in the wallpaper book. And then here's the other side of it. And so basically the same pages, same setup. Nice big pages. And that is definitely something that I loved in the journal that I'm working in right now. So I loved having the bigger pages because I've been doing some painting, but I also liked having the smaller pages too. And the pages that are shorter so that if I wanted to tape an envelope in, I really enjoyed having that in that journal. So I made sure I put some of those things uh, in these journals. And depending on what mood I was in, depending on what I wanted to journal about, I would just open up my journal and I would either find one of the larger pages or I'd find one of the smaller pages and just I liked having that flexibility. Another thing that I did with that journal was, and this was in Finding Your Style too, um, I went and I gessoed the pages and I loved how that made the pages feel and it just kind of primed them and it got it ready for me to do my artwork. And so it doesn't have to be gesso. You can just put, you know, paint on it. You can go and put blue paint on the pages if you wanted. I used white, but you can use um, anything you want to, to primer your pages. I think when I make my next one, I'm not gonna primer all of them because there are some times that I just wanna write or I wanna draw with Sharpies and Sharpies and gesso if it's like a matte gesso, they don't play well together and it ruins my Sharpies. So I might not do that to all my pages. So here's the third one. This has got a little hanky with some needlework on it and just some fabric that's been glued on. This is some textured scrapbook paper. Here is one of my favorite pieces of artwork and I've held onto it for a long time and I thought, oh, it's time to let it go. And then here's another piece of um, some scrapbook paper that is textured. And then this is a cool little hanky that I have turned into a pocket. So here is the fabric companion. And this is the other piece. And then again, the same setup. So anyway, as I was saying, I may not go through and gesso all of the pages when I make my next one. I do think that I'm definitely going to turn my next journal into a combination of junk journal and junk planner. I've been doing them separately, like I've been having a separate journal and then I would have a separate planner and I don't know why it's taken me so long to figure out. Um, I, I don't know, but I don't know why I do that. So I'm gonna put them together because a lot of times what I'm journaling about is time sensitive. Um, sometimes it can be something that we're doing on the weekend or it can just be a Saturday morning that my husband and I are sitting out on the deck and I'm just doing some doodling and things like that. So I'm going to, when I make my, no, uh, my next journal, I'm going to allow for some room to put in my planner pages and I'll probably only do a couple of months. I'll probably just do like November, December, maybe January. Um, because if I go through the next journal as quickly as I went through this last one, I don't think I've been in this journal, but maybe six weeks, um, and I'm I'm and I'm almost done. Like it's almost full. So this is the third journal. So these will be the three journals that I will have in my shop on Friday, October 11th, and like I said, I will do it at 6 p.m. Central Time. So yeah, these if you are looking for some big, junky art journals, um, these would be perfect. And like I said, they will they will bulk up and they will just become the best feeling journal uh, ever. And it's a good combination of art and textures and um, different fabrics and papers and just bits. And yeah, I think you will really, really enjoy this. The next thing that I've been working on for my shop is kind of something that I've been thinking about for about a year now, and I've just not ever kind of really put it into practice. So let me show you where this came from and then I'll explain what these are. You guys remember uh, back in the 70s, 80s, even the late 60s, um, stationery stores, like Hallmark stores, would sell these little gift books, okay? And the gift books, 
were to be given like to somebody like a friend on their birthday or um, sympathy or just to you know tell them hello and how are you doing and you're a great friend that type of thing and so pretty much people would get these and they would just kind of sit on the counter because you wouldn't do much with them they were just there to look at and they were had the cutest little illustrations there's um, a few authors or I'm sorry there's a few illustrators that were kind of known for putting their artwork into these books. But if you are into like 70s illustrations, these books are your jam. And and that is totally me. Like I love these because I am totally a 70s girl and I am obsessed with these illustrations. I just sit and look at them and I get so much inspiration. And then they also have little sentiments and um, quotes and maybe even like, I think there's a few um, that have like prayers and such. So these books are pretty much things that you would kind of keep on the shelf and you would just kind of have them there. And anyway, long story short, I have a collection of these. I have quite a few. I'm looking at my collection right now. I probably have, well here, I'll show you how many I have. Okay, so here are the ones that I have right now that are within reach. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just love them. They are just the sweetest. They just give me, I can look at these and I get so much inspiration. Like, here's one of my favorite ones. Um, this is called All About a Scorpio, and I am totally a Scorpio. And so this book, just, it is so totally me. It's me because of the 70s illustrations. It's me because of the color. It's me because I'm a Scorpio, and I just love little things like this. Another one that I really love is called I Wish You Bluebirds. And this one has the most precious illustrations ever in the history of the world. And if you like that whole... Um, sunbonnet girl type holly hobby type girl that's that's what this is so the illustrator for this one is Marilyn Conklin and she did a few of these there's a few other illustrators Let's see if I can find a couple other ones um, so if you're ever searching for these if you look for them this one's Alice Ann Biggerstaff if you search for the illustrator's name you might be able to find uh, books by them Sometimes I'll find them at estate sales. I, I'll be honest, I find them a lot at thrift stores. Um, and this, the, the one thrift store that I do find them at a lot happens to be run by a, um, it's like an elderly community where you would um, go and live, you know, in a house and then you would move into maybe a condo and then that kind of assisted living program where you start out and you move um, into steps into having more and more care as you age and they just have the best stuff and I love getting things from them because I know that the stuff has a story like someone has loved this stuff and someone had it in their collection or in their house and they've they've decided they no longer need it and so then it's my job to go get it and give it a new home so anyway these i love and this one's another one that's called all about you i love 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 this one because it's just oh it's just so stinking sweet and cute and yeah what i have found is that some of these are not always in the best condition and every once in a while i will run it well actually quite a bit i will run across ones that have um you know a lot of damage to them or they've had a bunch of writing in them and they wouldn't be ones that you would want to necessarily collect and I hate to let those go because I feel like they still have a purpose and I feel like there are people that can still cherish and love and use these illustrations and these words so here's what I came up with I took a collection of ones that I had that couldn't be kept um, intact and you know set on your shelf uh, they they had too much damage or they were ripped or things like that and what I did was I took the covers and I split them apart. I took, here, I'll pull this, push it out to the side there. I took a piece of pretty scrapbook paper and I attached it, so I'll show you. I attached it so that it kind of made a book. I put some sort of a cutout in the center and this is what the back would look like. I poked a little hole in it and then what I did was I took the pages from those books that were torn up and I stuck two of them in. 
And my idea was this would be an awesome addition to your journal. This would be a cool little thing. Like maybe you had, like here's a picture of my kitty cat. And he passed away uh, back in March. And we're very, very sad because we had him for 20 years. And so maybe I just have this really cool picture and I wanted to kind of commemorate it, but I didn't necessarily want to do a whole journal page. I could somehow embellish this, put his little picture in there, um, maybe find some words that would work and I could just kind of decorate this up. And then this could slip in the pocket of one of my journal spreads. So let's see if I can find... I could even fit like in here. So I've got that. I've also got, let's see if it would fit. Ooh, pretty. Actually, this size would actually fit into an envelope. And so there I've got just this cool little thing and it's like a little booklet and I've preserved this awesome book with its amazing illustrations and then I've turned it into some sort of a a journaling tag or a little journaling booklet that I could um, have some fun with and get creative with. So what I have, put my kitty cat back away. What I have is I have a set of, and I think I have 18 of these. So let me run through and I will show you what I'm going to put, um, or what, are, actually these are already in my shop. So I have, and you can see like these came from the same book. So like one was the back and one was the front. And then here is, so like this probably went with this one okay and you can open it up and you can see that these guys went together and then you can open it up and see that and then I just put a random um, like assortment of you'll get two pages from these books and they're just two random pages and I just picked ones that I thought would go good with the colors and then here's the bluebirds one I was sad when I saw that this one was all torn up but I was really excited to see that I could do something with them and it could still be usable look at that blue isn't that blue gorgeous so those are like a smaller size and let's see these are gonna be like six inches by almost four inches okay and then I have some bigger ones so these are going to be like seven and a half by about four and three quarters and so these guys again same thing so I have a front cover and a back cover and then I just use different scrapbook paper and different pictures and you can cut the pictures up the illustrations cut them up use the uh, the text use the pictures, keep them as is. And then I sewed some fabric on them and kind of added a few little embellishments. I didn't want to add too much because this is a personal thing. And so this would be, you know, you may not want a whole bunch of embellishments or maybe you just want to put your own tags and labels and things like that on there. So I tried to keep it very bare. And I'll be honest, the end papers for these books were part of the reason why I did this is because these are just gorgeous. Even the ones that are just colored are just gorgeous. This is a cool one because this is a book that was called Little Boys. And the, oh, this one has the picture of the little boy. This one doesn't, but it still has that same end paper. So on this one, I tried to put a little boy um, as, you know, one of the two pictures or illustrations. And then the last ones that I have, so this was a book, one of those gift books, and this was one about cats. And if you love cats, this would be a book that you would get. And I kind of went overboard on these guys um, because I put more than just two pages in. So that was the end paper right there. And then here's the scrapbook paper. This is an old Denison label that I put on here. And then I actually gave you guys um, in this cat's one, there's like five pages because there was just so many cute, I had a lot of these cat illustrations and cat pictures. So this one was the front of the cat's book. And then this one, is the back of the cat's book and I did a Denison label there again 
and yeah. So if you're a cat person, this would be super cute for you to do some sort of a journal embellishment about your cat or, or these would even be, I think these would even be cute to give as gifts to like a friend or something, if, especially if you have a friend that journals or does scrapbooking or anything like that. This would be such a cute gift to give to them because it's already that purpose. Like that's what these books were for. They were, they're called gift books and that's what they were for was to give away um, and make somebody happy. So this would be cute if you put your own personal touch on this and then gave it to somebody or put a picture or something in here of you guys or a time that you had um, that you wanted to remember. So anyway, these guys are already in my shop. And like I said, I have 18 of them. And I think that I have three different listings. So I have one for the smaller ones, one for the larger ones. And then I think I have a separate listing for the cats um, one. So yeah. Okay. The last thing that I have in my shop uh, this time around that's new. And I've already sold out of five of these. So I have five left. Um, actually, and then I sold three more. So I've sold eight of these. I only have three left. Five left. Sorry. Can't even count. So... This was, um, I tried this last weekend and just kind of said, hey, what do you guys think? Do you think I should do something like this? So I took, I hate having these pattern envelopes just sitting around. I feel like they should have some sort of a purpose. So I felt like, what if I took the pattern envelopes, deconstructed them, lined them, made them more sturdy, added some sort of a pocket, and then sold them as some sort of a folio or a folder, um, or something that you could put inside of a journal that would hold some of your journaling supplies. And so this is what I came up with. Why not make them sewing themed? So this is one right here that's still in my shop. And inside this, I have stuffed 10 things in here. So let me pull them out so you can see what I have. And each, um, each one has been lined with either, like this is shelf paper, so there were some that were lined with this old shelf paper, and then there were some that were lined with some wrapping paper. And then they have a hanky or a scarf that I've turned into the pocket. This is kind of a little pocket or a tuck spot, and this is kind of a little pocket or a tuck spot. And so here are the things that would be included into this like sewing envelope type folio thing. So one is just a pattern page that came out of these needlework, um, like embroidery transfers type thing. And they just had these really cool patterns. So there's, and they're old, they're very old, but you could definitely cut these up and use them for collage. So there'll be one of those, a vintage receipt, some note paper, sewing themed note paper, a package of some scene binding, a piece of some sort, or a package of some sort of a snap, and these are all old, so some of them are like really, really old and falling apart. Some of them are in better shape. A button card, um, four of these label stickers that I stamped some sewing stuff on, a piece of note paper, that I stamped, um, this is, has to do with, looks like a vintage knitting ad, and so I stamped that on there. This is a tag where I did some more stamping, some sewing stamping, and then this is um, a card that I actually turned into a little journal, and so I just sewed this together, and these are some pages from a sewing book, and so there's like four pages and this would be four so there's like eight pages and this would just be a cute little journal to um, practice doing some painting or writing or doing some collage on and so I've tucked all of these things into this little folio and yeah I thought this was kind of cool to do with this sewing theme because you know it's patterned so might as well keep the theme going and everything kind of has it place, its place, but you could absolutely take these things out and put your own 
things in and hopefully you'll use these. I think these button cards are the coolest things to use as tags, like put some fabric or something right here and use it as a tag and maybe even back it with something and you could do some journaling on it. Um, and then of course seam binding, you can always find things to do with seam binding. And then it kind of gets folded up like this and there you go. So these guys, I have five of them left and they are also in my shop and um, everything is the same except you might have a different Let's see, you might have a different um, style of button or different style of snaps. And there's two different hankies that I use. There's the dark hankies and then there is the uh, light hanky. And so you'll just have to see, if you check the pictures in the listings, it'll show you what the inside, I took pictures of the inside of each one of these so you'll know exactly um, what you're getting or you should know. Okay, so I think that's what I have so far. I also have a new journal thing that I've got going on. I'll give you a little sneak peek. Okay, so back with the Hallmark stuff again. I'm just obsessed with this because I can remember going to the Hallmark shop with my mom and it seems like we were there all the time. And then I also had this little Hallmark shop that was in our downtown area and we lived close to the downtown so that was like a thing whenever I would have friends over we'd walk downtown and I always remember going in the Hallmark shop and buying stickers like that was that was my thing that was my favorite thing and oh it smelled so good in there I always loved how it smelled anyway um so do you remember these date books and we we talked about these this summer I showed you guys um again I have a huge collection shouldn't say huge, but I have quite a few of these guys. And I'm like, okay, what can we do with these? There's got to be something that we can do with these to make them usable so that they're not just sitting on a shelf collecting dust. How can we honor them and use them and incorporate them and be able to appreciate them um, as much as they need to be appreciated? Because I'm sorry, this is the cutest thing ever in the whole wide world. Okay, so here we go journals journals that are made out of a date book so i did one this is like my prototype i did this last weekend and this is a 1981 and i'll be honest this was not the prettiest of the covers um if you look at this one compared to that one i feel like 1981 kind of got gypped but that's kind of how the 80s were so why not make this cute i felt like this needed to, to be loved. This needed to be pretty. So I made this journal cover and I put this on here and then I added the cutest trim as the pockets. And again, I'm gonna do this with a one signature. Um, I am in love with the one signature. I love how it feels. I love how they grow with you. And so these are gonna end up and be one signature journals. That way, you can get it and you can use it and you will feel like you've accomplished something because you don't have 768,000 pages in there that you need to finish. Um, and, it, and it can be something that is not overwhelming. That's another thing about those single uh, signature journals is they're not overwhelming. I feel like every time I go and I work on a page, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've, I'm completing this journal. And that just makes me, that makes me really happy. So anyway, this is my next uh, project. I don't know how many of these I will get done, but here's the thing. I have a lot of these. I have some that go all the way back to the 50s, um, and then I think the latest I have is like 1982. If you would be interested in these and you wanna give me a shout out in the comments and tell me what years um, you would like to see me make, I can try really hard to get started on those particular ones. Um, and I'm hoping to get these guys done and in the shop, I don't know, somewhere around Thanksgiving-ish. Um, that way, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of uh, something to look forward to before the big Christmas rush hits and Maybe you even buy yourself a little Christmas gift. I don't know. But anyway, if, if it's something that you would be interested in and, and you have some particular dates that you would like to see me do, particular years, throw those in the comments below and I will get working on those. And then I will keep you guys updated on the promise I are on the progress. I cannot promise these as custom orders, but what I will do is if I have multiples and I have multiple people saying, hey, um, could you make a 1978? I will, I will definitely make sure that um, I try to get as many 
as I can in the shop so that everybody has an opportunity um, to get one. And I'm probably overreaching by saying I will do all of these because <laughs> I just know I just don't have enough time. Um, that and I get bored with stuff really easy. So I could see me getting into this and being like, okay, I've done six years. I think I need to take a break. Anyway, kiddos, this is what I got going on and this is where I'm at and I'm really, really excited. And somehow I want to incorporate one of these in the next journal that I make for myself. So we'll see how that works out. Um, this has been a great video catching up with you guys. I hope you are doing well. I hope you are healthy. I hope you are happy. Um, I hope your October is rocking. And I do have some process videos for you. They are actually October themed process videos. I just have not had a stinking minute to sit down and do the voiceovers. Um, so that's on my agenda to do this weekend and get those process videos out to you guys and um, let you uh, hopefully get inspired by some of my crazy my crazy journaling. Uh, guys, take care. Remember my shop will have updates right now. There are new things in it, but I will also be putting those journals in on Friday, October 11th at 6 p.m. I will talk to you later. Bye.